computer, that. but 50 years after it was cracking Nazi codes in the Second World War, a British computer called Colossus is being rebuilt to try to prove that our scientists were actually the first. As Charles Rhodes reports, the secrecy surrounding the computer and Churchill's order to destroy it after the war have so far prevented Colossus taking its rightful place in history. At radio intercept stations throughout Britain during the Second World War, hundreds of radio operators were listening in to German military communications between the generals in the field and Berlin's high command. The radio operators couldn't understand the messages because they were in code. Their job was to punch in the messages into teleprinter tape like this, and then it was sent to Bletchley Park, where the world's first computer unraveled its secrets. Bletchley Park's 8,000 codebreakers were deciphering German military codes like Enigma from the early days of the war. But the highly complex codes produced by the Lorentz electrical scrambling machine were more challenging. This machine, captured by the Allies after the D-Day landings, is the last surviving Lorentz in the world. The Nazis were so confident its codes were impossible to crack, they used it to transmit future battle plans. But the Germans hadn't reckoned on Colossus. Lorentz codes, which took staff six to eight weeks to crack by hand, were broken in just two hours by Colossus. It gave staff at Bletchley Park direct access to the secret communications between Hitler and his senior generals. They managed to, to get the code breaking fully operational uh, just before D-Day and they were able to decipher very important messages which uh, showed that Hitler had swallowed the deception campaigns that we've been mounting which kept the panzer divisions in Belgium. And he was telling his generals not to move the panzer divisions until it was far too late for them to come down to Normandy to help oppose the landings. Telephone engineer Harry Fenson was one of those enlisted in the project to build Colossus. More than 50 years on, he's still working with computers, this time to help recreate the technology that lays behind Colossus. We were doing something in 1942 which took years afterwards before we got anything comparable. And so we were really in advance of our time. Uh, but also it shows that the ideas that, that uh, developed into, into what we've got nowadays, how they came about, who were the people who did them, and, and we ought to give them the credit for it. Despite Colossus's undoubted success in cracking German codes, the secret nature of its work meant its achievements were largely unknown. After the war, Churchill ordered its destruction. Up until the 1970s, almost everything about the computer was classified. But now Colossus is being brought back to life. Using photographs and original plans, Tony Sale, a former MI5 spy catcher, has spent the last two years rebuilding Colossus. His intelligence career has given him access to the secrets of the computer. His search for components has led to the telephone exchange. We now go out and raid exchanges that are being decommissioned and gather in all the components that are there. And although some of those probably manufactured 20 years after Colossus, they're still precisely the same dimensions and look as the original Colossus components. The techniques pioneered on Colossus were developed to build Ernie, the premium bond computer. When Ernie went online in 1957, it took nine days to pick the winning numbers. After its vital contribution to the war effort, Colossus will soon become one of the attractions in the museum celebrating Bletchley Park's wartime achievements. Charles Rhodes, BBC News.